Henry Ford by Will Pollock. Henry Ford was born on July 30, 1863 in Wayne County, Michigan on his family's farm. He was not a fan of the farm work he was doing with his family, so at the age of 16 he left home to go to, the, to, go to Detroit and be a mechanic for a shipbuilding firm. In the years that Ford worked as a mechanic, he learned how to service and operate steam engines very well. As well as that, Ford also studied bookkeeping. His decision to leave home as a kid and work on steam engines proved to be highly influential in his life. In 1890, at, the, at age 27, Ford was hired as an engineer for the Detroit Edison Company, and within three years of working there, he was promoted to chief engineer. During his time here, Ford developed the first gasoline-powered buggy. This buggy had a two-cylinder, four-horsepower engine. In 1896, he went on to develop the Ford Quadricycle, which was his first model car. By 1899, Ford had already made his third model car and also received a patent for a carburetor, which is a machine that blends air and fuel in a sh safe proportion for combustion. This machine was essential for the making of Ford's cars, and it's still used in cars to this day. This led to Ford leaving Edison's company to pursue car making full time. In 1903, Henry Ford founded his world famous company, the Ford Motor Company. This is where Henry Ford revolutionized American industry. In 1903, Ford made the Model T, which was the first car to become affordable for most Americans. This revolutionized America. <clears throat> the Model T and the cars that followed changed the way of American life forever. It was obviously a quicker way of transportation, so the Model T changed the way and where people worked, allowed people to do different things in their leisure time, and allowed people to travel the country more. This car was very important because almost any American who had a decent to good enough salary could afford one. The Model T was so popular that by 1918 almost half of the cars in the country were Model Ts. There was a reason Ford was able to make the Model T affordable for most Americans and that is because of the assembly line. In 1913 Ford created and implemented the assembly line to build his Model T. Ford was inspired by flour mills and Chicago meat plants to create the assembly line and it changed US industry forever. The assembly line was a method in which each employee would specialize in one part in the making of a product. In the Model T's case, Ford broke up into the, into the making of the car into 84 steps, and each employee was responsible for one step. This was very affected, effective and lowered the manufacturing time of the car from 12, hour, from 12 hours to two, to two and a half hours, and this lowered the price of the Model T to $850 to about $360. The assembly line changed factories forever as it is still one of the most effective means of production and it is still used today. The first Model T was built in 1908 and with the top speed of 45 miles per hour was a much faster way to travel. It was in 1913 that Ford introduced an idea that revolutionized how cars were made. He used an assembly line, a moving belt that would carry car parts to workers who put the parts and the car together, piece by piece. With the assembly line, a car that once took 12 and a half hours to make, now took less than six. Henry Ford was also the man responsible for improving the working conditions for his employees. Ford changed his workers' hours from six days a week, nine hours a day, to a five-day, 40-hour work week. While also lowering his workers' hours, he doubled their pay. He changed his employees' pay from $2.34 a day to $5 for less work. This greatly improved the lives of his employees and made the manufacturing of his vehicles much more faster and productive. As well as giving his employees better lives, America adopted his five-day, 40-hour work week, and it is still the traditional work week to this day. Henry Ford was also a philanthropist. As someone who opposed World War I, he funded a peace ship to Europe during the war. On Ford's peace ship was many pacifists who, pacifists who Ford thought could help negotiate an end to the war. He also created the Ford Foundation, which raised money for grants in education, development, and research. The Ford Foundation is still around to this day and is headquartered in New York. As much money as he gave away and as he was for peace, Ford was very racist towards the Jews. He supported newspapers that were anti-Jew and even published a few anti-Semite writings himself, including a pamphlet titled The International Jew, The World's Most Foremost Problem. He was so against Jews that he was given the Grand Cross of the German Eagle, given by Adolf Hitler, which was one of the biggest Nazi awards given to foreigners. Henry Ford was a person who truly revolutionized America. 
From the assembly line to the traditional American work began being the first to create an affordable car for the common person, he made American industry better and more efficient. Even though Ford was racist when it came to the Jews, he was overall good for the American worker and great for American industry, with many of his methods still being used today.